Hello YouTube, Hester 781 It's that lovely time of year again. Where every oak tree in your yard just says, you know, I really don't like you. So it only means one thing. Time to get the leaf back up and running again. like a glove all right i've said it once and i'll say it again if you don't have a winch mounted to the ceiling of your shop there is a whole world you're missing out on um <laughs> anyway so here's the leaf vac um dr i think it's a a, two, a 2000 or, or something like that i forget the the actual model name of it there's like three different levels there's like small medium and extra large and uh, this is the single wheel option. Uh, it's a it's been a great um, leaf vac for me. Uh, bought it a couple years ago off a guy in New Hampshire who had only used it once or twice, and it was too big for his needs. I uh, paid like four hundred bucks for it, and got a little nine point five nine foot pound two twenty three cc. It's a Honda clone. You know, it's basically a Predator, uh, you know, a slightly bigger version. Um, it's filthy right now because it's been sitting since um, I got it all put away last year. And just got to get her uh, up and running, so we'll do that now. All right, first we'll start off up here, see if um, anything bad happened in the fuel tank. I don't know how well you can see, it's getting kind of washed out, but... Fuel tank is nice and clean. That's the little fuel filter, spotless. I always, I soak a, put a rag inside, like a paper towel and just soak up whatever's left because the pickup for the fuel is here and the bottom of the tank is here. So there's always a little something that you won't be able to run dry. How's the air filter doing? Um, the one thing I don't remember if I did or not was actually drain the carb bowl or did I just run it dry? Air filter's still pretty clean. I'll probably take a blowgun to it anyway just to get some of the dust off. That's it for up here. Let me get you in a stand. Then we'll start off with a quick blow off. Uh, noise alert for those with headphones on. I was hoping there were, uh, I wonder if the mice might have made a nest inside this cover, but I don't see any signs of it. Let me, uh, let's check out the carb. And right here, the carb bowl. Give that another quick blow. Don't want to get any dirt in there. Um, here's the drain nut, here's the bowl nut. If I see nothing come out of here, it's a good thing. Absolutely dry. I think I'll just pop it off just in case because I don't remember, like I said, I don't remember doing this last year. And still dry. Very good. And are you guys even looking at me? Yeah, here we go. Bowl is clean. There's a little bit of stuff on the bottom, but that's uh. That's respectable. Never had a problem with this thing running. Like I say. So I'm gonna slap that back on there and we'll move on. And on this particular setup, there's what's called a sediment bowl. It's sort of like a, a filter to catch anything that might have gotten past the filter, but also catch it before it goes to the float bowl. If that doesn't sound confusing as hell, it's right here. It's a 10 millimeter, but it's extremely shallow. So I would recommend a six point socket because I have, see, I have stripped these out before trying to use a wrench. I mean, it, it, I'll show you when I get it off. All right. That is all you have. 
it may look like a lot but it's like a slight taper to it so it's trust me you don't want to mess with it um again nice and clean so just give it a quick blow out and now it's time for the oil all right i'm glad i caught this real quick so remember i said i was going to take the air filter off and blow it out well if you're going to change your air filter you would probably just take it off throw it away slap the new one on this little gasket of course it stayed on now because i put it back on to show you this little rubber gasket oftentimes you can see the little mark it stays stuck to the air filter so you throw that away you take the new one and you line it up put it on you think you're done it will screw on but it will suck all sorts of dirt in you can see how filthy it is it'll suck dirt in past that little uh this little ring and it'll wipe out your engine quick fast and in a hurry i've seen it happen at least three times i'm sure guys who do this for a living have seen it a lot more so anytime on a honda predator anything of the sort make sure you have this gasket in place and as far as dumping the oil can't be any simpler just one 10 millimeter uh, yeah 10 millimeter drain plug which they put ever so nicely right in the way so that when it does drain it's just going to get all over the frame so i usually start it draining and yeah that's about it i was going to say I, I either raise it or lower it so it doesn't make an entire mess and i think that's going to be good so we'll let that drip for a while and for the astute of you that have noticed it's quite dark, it's actually quite purple. It's a uh, royal purple synthetic. Go ahead, make your laughs, make your jokes, but I rely so heavily on this thing that I just want to give this engine every chance it has in a long, healthy life, uh, especially where I knew it didn't have much use before I did. So the other half of this project is this is the leaf sucking tube um, the one that comes if you know anything about these units the one the the tube that comes with it is extremely light duty um very thin uh, it rips and there's duct tape on every one that you see so a friend of mine works in a landscape company and they had uh, a small section of this eight inch diameter leaf vac tube because they use it for the big trucks uh, he said I was welcome to it. So I, you know, I was, yes. So, uh, the tricky part. Last year, this is how I attached it to this side of the tube. I have three rivets with uh, giant washers. And this is fine. This is not going anywhere. This side is what attaches to the intake hole. Now, the mower side, I made work last year with a couple hose clamps, but I, I didn't like it. And so I want to try to come up with something, almost like a, a quick latch system. Like if I could get a couple of latches, um, you know, the kind that like flip over and you can click and close. I mean, that would be awesome because then I could just quickly unhitch it clear out a clog or take it off the mower and etc etc so i'm gonna look through my stash see if i have any latches that might work if not i might just run to the hardware store all right so here's the game plan and i'm, I'm trying to work with just you know stuff i have on hand um the only thing i did go out and buy are these closed s hooks and i'll show you why in a minute so the plan is Here's the side discharge chute that goes on the mower. I have these, you know, electrical, I think they're called burndies. Um, I'm gonna take these, one on each side, and stick it right through. So I'm clamped right on this, uh, it's sort of steel going through. Every, every orange ring you see is, is steel. And I'm gonna clamp through one of these springs. These are stainless steel springs. 
clip the spring onto the clothes hook and then just connect. So basically it'll be like that, but with the clothes hook instead of just spring. And then I should be able to just quick release, quick release on the other side and uh, should be good. See what happens. And this is what I was trying to say. So here's this, um, just a Burndy. I think these are 3 16ths. It fit perfectly. You can see the little spikes just coming through. Clamp down on the spring. That's under just enough tension to where I have to fight a little bit to get it off. And that's perfect. This isn't really gonna go anywhere. This is all the way up to here is the plastic. So there's gonna be a little give. And if it ever, I mean, if I'm pulling this off, plus I don't have a spring on the other side yet, but if I'm pulling this off, it's cause I've jackknifed the trailer and it's, it's dragging behind me. So I'm happy with that. Let's do the other side. And here's the finished product. <clears throat> like I said, hook over there, hook over there, spring here, spring there. Last thing I did off camera, I just ground the tips of the uh, bolts and screws as flush as I could, just to prevent leaves and stuff from catching on it, you know, making, possibly making a, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? A clog. Um, only thing I might add on, I don't know, this, this is one of the, a special clamp just for uh, landscape hose. Thinking about putting it on just as, I don't know, you think it would help give this extra support against pulling? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And, uh, all right, we'll finish up maintenance on the leaf deck. Okay, got it filled up with oil. Um, takes less than a quart of oil. Um, cheap, very cheap maintenance on these engines. Oil, put some fresh fuel in it. Air filter got blown out and cleaned. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the throttle all the way up just until it catches and then I'm gonna turn it right back down because I want it to warm up before you know you never want to run something at full full bore right away when it's cold if you can help it. Um, so choke on, fuel on, we'll give it a second. Let's make sure there's no no leaks or wetness. Cross your fingers. What do you think? One pull? So I just turned you back on. So a, a top tip that I sort of follow with these, um, I ignore, if I, if I can help it, there's an on off switch. That's how you're supposed to, you know, shut it off. I don't like that on these or any, any leaf vac, uh, leaf blower walk behind. I shut the fuel off and I let it kill itself because there's that big impeller on the end. It makes so much momentum that as soon as you shut it off, it's going to keep spinning for, you know, almost, you know, 45 seconds or so afterwards. So it's going to keep sucking fuel in and just, I mean, I've had people have rough starting issues for people who shut them off and try to turn them back on. Um, backfiring out of the exhaust, um, washing the cylinder out. I just, I'd, I'd rather, you know, be on the safe side. Is it going to kill the engine? No. But why why have unburnt fuel going into the cylinder and then, you know, gumming up the works if you can help it? Okay, and last but not least, a top tip on uh, any of these DR products. Every year, I go around to all these knobs, and I just give them a little twist and make sure... Yeah, see? I mean, this thing vibrates like nobody's business when you're when you're using it. So, and I see these all the time. They're missing. They're a very common um, thing to order offline. 
because it's like this. You know, I tighten these every year, and I'm always surprised by how much they loosen up. So just save yourself a couple bucks, save yourself a future headache. A half a twist now saves you five bucks later, you know? Lastly, the wheels on these things, 20 PSI each side, that's what I set them to. They do hold a tremendous amount of weight, believe it or not, when this thing's chock full of uh, mulched up leaves. And then uh, a couple pumps of grease into the fittings on each side. And uh, there you go. Well, as you can tell, it's a very loud operation. So, you just pull this little lever. She tilts forward. Lift this up. And that is all just that one pass. Just doing a, doing a little circle to show you guys how it works. Just so you have an idea of how many times I need to dump this. <sighs> Don't you love fall? Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Thank you all for watching. Liking, commenting, subscribing. Oh, sub subscribing. We have blown through the ceiling. We are now almost at 650 subscribers. I just want to take a second. Thank you all. You guys are awesome. You're the reason I keep doing this stuff, making these videos, stuttering on camera, um, all that stuff. Um, so I want to propose something. I have more than double the amount of subscribers I had at this point last year. Let's see if we can break through 1,000 by New Year's. Think we can do it? I'll try to keep the videos coming. You guys just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you all again. Have a good one. Bye.